In this video, I'm going to show you how to open up collaboration on your business opportunities and align your entire sales and marketing team to become perfectly customer focused. Welcome to this tutorial of our HubSpot CRM and Confluence app for Teams. Our app has a couple of benefits. When you publish your CRM in Confluence, you crank the seller open and allow everyone to align their work to the current status. And when I mean current, I mean that you can be sure that the information on Confluence is accurate and updated. For example, the marketing manager can see a list of the deals that need a final push to close. And some of those accounts have objections about pricing. The content manager can then quickly prepare a competitor analysis to address their concerns and close these deals. Confluence is a perfect platform for these discussions. Sales reps can ask for feedback on next steps and to be more accountable for their actions. Managers and other stakeholders can have a comprehensive overview of every opportunity and adapt so their work that they have the highest impact. Let's now jump into Confluence and see how to connect HubSpot. Creating a connection. To create a connection, an admin has to go into the HubSpot configuration and the settings section of Confluence. From here, click on Create Connection on the top right. Give a name to your connection. I'm going to name mine Business Opportunities. Then I can restrict which users can connect to HubSpot with this connection. This is a great way to make sure that only the right people have access to HubSpot. Now you can click on OK. The new connection will appear on the list. I can't stress how important this step is. If your company has implemented HubSpot successfully, then you will have a stream of pipelines for different product lines. Or you will have different stages. Some of them are aligned to marketing, some others to sales. All of this can be published, but it's complex. You have to figure out how you are going to capture every dimension and who needs to see it. Authentication. Next, we need to connect your HubSpot instance. Click on the blue connect button. If you're not logged in like me, you will be asked for your HubSpot credentials. Then select your HubSpot account and you will be back in Confluence. As you have seen, I've created a connection that all my HubSpot users can access. The goal here is to publish our main business opportunities so we can review them and discuss them as a larger team. Let's open a new page in Confluence for our main opportunities. I will include different sections about main target people and different deals we are working on. As you can see, I have three sections. In the first, I want to have a small list of the top decision makers we are currently working. In the second, another small list of deals that are closer to win. And finally, I'm going to include every contact in the CRM. Let me start by first creating the full list of our current contacts. I'm going to type slash HubSpot to open the macro. Then I have to make sure that I'm using the right connection, business opportunities. Next, I select contacts in the dropdown. Now I'm ready to search. To get everything, I use the asterisk. Here are the results. To select all, I click on the checkbox at the top of the list. There I have 311 items. By the way, there are no limits how many contacts you can publish at once. Finally, I can manage the properties here called columns that are included in the table. I will add associated deals and job title. Let's insert this and publish. So that's a long list. I see that the table has some scroll. So I'm going to edit back and go to white to show every column. 
now you should see that each of these contact links to HubSpot. For example, let's click to Elsa Müller here. I access her record directly on HubSpot, if I'm logged in. Next, I will add the top decision makers. This time, I'm looking for a specific contact. I know her name is Maria. There she is. Let's insert her. That's a good starting point. I can edit the macro and customize the columns. And I can also add more contacts. I look again in the entire list and cherry pick some. Harry, Hermine, Albus, there you go. Let's go wide again. Finally, I add some deals. I'm going to look for their stages. I want to add deals that are qualified to buy or close one. Note how I can make both queries in the same action as long as I select the records I want to publish. I want to include some columns where I don't have a lot of values, like in the close lost and close one reason. Precisely because it's important to discuss as a team why we have information gaps. These fields should always have the right information and Confluence can be a very helpful way to enforce them. To preserve HubSpot as an original source, our HubSpot CM Confluence app doesn't allow you to edit any values from the Confluence pages. But since the tables are filled with hyperlinks, you can easily find what you need to change and jump back. Let's see a couple of these examples. Let's access the first deal in this list. I want to add that the presentation we did for this customer was amazing and the main reason we won. So once I add that and refresh Confluence, the new closed one reason is there so everyone can see it. Next, I want to remove Aurora because she objected to being in our database. There she is. I click on her name and delete her on HubSpot. And when I go back, there is no one between Argos and Filiators anymore. Account executives need to stay on the top of their pipeline. That's Sales Management 101. Is it possible to find deals and contacts by owner and pipeline? The answer is yes, of course. Let's look at how you can segment your HubSpot CRM from Confluence. Welcome to the advanced search and filtering options. They are even more powerful than the native search functionality in HubSpot. To access the advanced search, open the side panel and click on the HubSpot search logo. Here we will find the main options that you're already familiar with. There are also filters. Let's look for deals and add a filter. You can filter by any column in the connection. I'm looking for an account executive, so I pick the deal owner. Select an operator I'm going to leave is one off. Now I want to add a second condition. So I click on the end operator. I want to check a particular sensitive pipeline, mad deals. I hit apply to see the results. And I can also customize which properties I use. Let's build a more complex filter now based on contacts. I want to see all contacts where I am the contact owner. As you can see, the list is way too long. Let's build some segmentations. I wanted to see the contacts that belongs to either the company Happy Wizard or the company Stealing Cooper Draper Price. I first add the condition for Happy Wizard and the column Associated Company. When I hit Apply, then I see four records. To add the other company, I have to create an OR condition. Then I repeat the same filter, but with a different company.
I hit apply again and there you go. Those are the seven contacts that are becoming my best friends. And I could keep editing and and or conditions. Properties are the currency of your HubSpot data. They are super valuable. But there are also so many of them. Default properties, custom properties, hundreds of them. That's one of the reasons why it's possible to restrict which properties can be included with each of the connectors. Another reason is to build connectors for different purposes. And yet another is to prevent access to confidential info. Let's go back to the configuration and see an example. In this case, I want to build a connector designed for sales development representative. And all I want is contact information so that they can reach out. Let's create a new connection and name it contact details. I select the SDR group here. I click on OK. Connect. And now I can click on the pencil button under action to edit the connection. Here I'm going to select which columns will be accessible with the connection. These columns include every default property and every custom property in the connector tabspot instance. First I select the classic contact details. Name, email, phone address, etc. The selection saves when you click outside of the drop down. And you can go to the deal columns, which I'm going to basically deactivate. And the company columns, street, address, city, country, phone number, etc. Let's click OK. Now I'm going to build a page for contact details. I create a new macro. and select the contact details connection. Now when I look for contacts, I will find the properties I just defined. And I can decide which of them to include in the macro, but I can't include anything else, like monthly recurring revenue, last campaign or anything like this. Congratulations! You have finished watching this tutorial and how to integrate HubSpot CRM into Confluence. You've learned how to connect the two platforms, how to create an overview page to keep everyone on the same page, how to create and use filters with nested logic operators, and how to create connections that serve different properties in the end. I hope you enjoyed. If you try the app, please send your suggestions and we'll be happy to keep growing the product. I'm dropping out here. Thanks a lot. Cheers.